Hello, I'm Angelo Persibali, and I'm going to talk to you about Florida sum, uh, summer weather. This is a reprise of uh, last year's talk, since uh, this is the time of hurricane season and Florida weather impacts us. I, this chart shows my, my background and my credentials. It mainly shows that, number one, that I'm not a, I'm not a meteorologist or a weather forecaster. I'm just a, a guy that's lived through a lot of weather, I've had some courses in my pilot training days, but uh, we'll proceed on. And first of all, I want to, uh, the objective of this talk is to give you some increased awareness of Florida weather hazards, primarily in the summertime. Uh, that consists of thunderstorms, light tornadoes, lightning, hurricanes, and heat. So, first of all, the, uh, the Thunderstorms are the nastiest stuff Mother Nature gives us. It, uh, we don't get much warning and it gets pretty violent. Sometimes it gets, of course, it gets lightning, tornadoes, and hail. Oh, by the way, the lightning is what causes the thunder, so they really technically should be called lightning storms, but we've, you know, years ago they called it thunderstorms. Anyway, it produces lightning, tornadoes, and hail, probably all at once sometimes. Uh, of course, we have hurricanes, and along with that, both with the uh, thunderstorms and, and hurricanes, we get floods. And finally, the summer weather, we have heat and humidity that can affect us and actually cause some deaths. I'll talk about that later. We'll talk first about thunderstorms. Thunderstorms. Actually, they cover a small area compared to hurricanes, uh, about 15 miles in diameter, lasts about 30 minutes or so, and about 10% of the estimated 100,000 thunderstorms this year, per year in the U.S., are classified as severe. So most of them are less than severe. Uh, the most exciting type of weather, both from a, from a ground person's point of view and for an aviator's point of view. So what causes them? Every thunderstorm needs, every thunderstorm needs moisture to form clouds and rain. Unstable air, which is warm air that rises rapidly, and lift caused by cold or warm fronts, sea breezes, mountains, or the sun's heat. All thunderstorms are dangerous. Why worry about them? Uh, first of all, lightning uh, averages 55 to 60 fatalities and 400 injuries per year in the U.S. Uh, more than a hundred billion dollars in insured losses per year occur in the U.S. from thunderstorms. Uh, tornadoes average 60 to 65 fatalities and about 1,500 injuries per year in the U.S. Wind speeds can get up to 200 miles, greater than 200 miles an hour in tornadoes. And they can be a, a mile wide and stay on the ground for over 50 miles. Next, uh, we'll talk about hail. It's larger than a softball, five inches in diameter. By the way, about, I don't know if you, you read about a week or two ago in Texas, there was hail that had about a softball size. I don't know if it exceeded the record, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but the hail causes over a billion dollars in crop and, and uh, property damage per year in the U.S. And it's extremely dangerous, obviously, to aviation. And I'll show you some pictures of that as we go along. Uh, winds, they can exceed 125 miles an hour in, in, in thunderstorms. And destruction can be equal to that, or equal to a tornado. And thunderstorms can also produce flash floods or flooding. And it turns out it's number one cause of thunderstorm deaths, over 90 fatalities a year in the U.S., the data we have. So, something to keep in mind. Thunderstorms need moisture, unstable atmosphere, and lift to form, as I said earlier. In Florida, we have more thunderstorms than any other state. We're the thunderstorm capital of the U.S. Uh, we're primarily because we're located close to large bodies of water. 
the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico that provides the moisture. We have plenty of sun and it warms the air near the ground and it causes unstable air and frequent sea breezes provide lift for the thunderstorms. Uh, believe it or not, there is a ridge uh, that goes basically down the middle of the Florida Peninsula that uh, with the highest point over 300 feet uh, that also the sea breezes can, can push the air up from that ridge. Here's a, a, a set of data that was presented several years ago to show that Florida is the thunderstorm capital. You can see here where we get over there by Lake Okeechobee and, and Fort Myers, we get greater than 100 storms a year. Uh, elsewhere, we get anywhere from 70 to 80, 70 to 80 thunderstorms uh, per year. So, it, uh, in fact, one of the little, one of the interesting uh, uh, side subjects to that is there. There have been a couple of attempts of uh, of uh, a uh, cooperation between industry and, and and the universities to see if we can harness the lightning that comes from a thunderstorm and save the energy. But so far, nothing's proved practical of that. Okay, let's talk a little about thunderstorm stages. First of all. You have the towering cumulus. We had a very good example of this last Friday. Had a towering cumulus. Cumulus comes from the Latin meaning to pile up. So the cumulus uh, builds up and they reach about 20,000 feet altitude. And it's all vertical currents in that as far as it forms it. Uh, and it develops and develops into the, what's called the mature stage, which is a combination of updrafts and downdrafts that exceed, that can exceed 40,000 feet. I've uh, been in, associated where the forecasters said that down in Texas, one of the thunderstorms there was over 60,000 feet. So they can really get up there. It's a lot of energy and there's vertical, a lot of, as you can see, a lot of vertical uh, updrafts and a lot of downdrafts. Uh, and then finally it goes with the call the dissipating or the mature stage. Uh, the dissipating stage and that's characterized by uh, kind of an anvil top and primarily all down drafts and, uh, and, and it, 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 it's also fairly dangerous too but, uh, but, uh, we'll go to the next phase uh, the developing the cumulus stage is uh, a towering cumulus as I said earlier rising air Usually rains very little during this stage and lasts about 10 minutes. Occasional lightning can occur from that, but mainly it's all uh, the, the growth developing stage. The uh, mature stage is uh, it's really a nasty stage. It's the most likely time for hail and heavy rain, frequent lightning, strong winds, tornadoes. Uh, as a combination of vertical, as I said, vertical uh, updrafts and, and downdrafts, and all within that cloud. And of course, it's occasionally very black or dark green in appearance, and lasts 10 to 20 minutes, sometimes longer. But uh, as I say, it's relatively short lived, uh, but it's potent. Dissipating stage is primarily just all the rain falling out of the cloud. Downdrafts, downward flowing air dominate. Uh, rainfall intensity starts letting up and we still get strong wind bursts and lightning remains a danger. That kind of summarizes a, a, a good picture of the schematic that shows a typical thunderstorm as you can see up on the right hand side, the anvil. Uh, Updrafts, downdrafts, some roll clouds that can provide turbulence if you're flying. Uh, best not to fly anywhere near these clouds, actually. Uh, and then there's various sources of turbulence on each, each side, they, uh, and, and gusts and dust can be kicked up. So that kind of summarizes that. But don't, don't think that thunderstorms are all evil. 
there are a lot of benefits to thunderstorms. Nature has created these things for several reasons. First of all, they're lifeguards for, for men and, and living creatures. Uh, the rainfall coming out of them is a source of, of life for for men and and, uh, and animals and plants. And secondly, it acts as an air conditioner, thunderstorm. It, it, it feels like it's cooling after the storm, a cooling device for the earth. The important thing to remember is the release of nitrates, fertilizes the soil. Um, since 80%, roughly 80% of our our air that we breathe is net is is gaseous nitrogen, uh, and about 20% is oxygen. So the net the, the it turns the, the lightning turns the, um, the nitrogen into nitrate compounds for soil fertilizing. If you bought soil or fertilizer for your soil or your, your grass, you see that there's a lot of nitrates in there that, that, that are used for fertilization. As a gas, the nitrogen can't be used, it can't be used by the plants and, and vegetables. And so it has to be in the nitrate form. And of course, it provides proteins to the animal kingdom. It removes thunderstorms, remove pollution. It cleans the air, and, and we feel fresh after a thunderstorm. So all, all the pollution, like the exhaust gases and that sort of thing, get caught by the downfalling rain and dissipate into the ground. And of course, uh, another one that you don't think of is it causes forest fires. Most of the forest fires are, are caused by, by thunderstorms. Uh, to reseed and fertilize the uh, the forest. Uh, interesting little fact that you know, there are certain pines whose cones won't open until they reach a high temperature that can only be achieved by a forest fire. And then the pine cone will open and it will re release the seeds that fertilize and uh, to uh, replant. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a necessary evil. Let's talk a little bit about lightning. I'm going to start with some Angelo lightning stories. If you see this airplane, it's a huge airplane. It has an antenna that goes from the top of the tail, a big wire, down to just behind the cockpit. Uh, and I, I point that out because the, the first time I got, uh, I was in, in flight uh, over the state of Maine, I got struck. We got struck by lightning. It, the only damage it did to the airplane is it, it uh, disconnected the, uh, the, the trailing the big antenna for our HF radios at, at, the, at the cockpit. And it was unbeknownst to us at the time when we landed, we saw that the, the wire had completely wrapped around the rudder, the vertical rudder. It uh, could have caused a problem if we needed to have a large rudder throw like for an engine failure or something. Second time uh, that, I, that, I, that I was involved, I was over the Mediterranean and uh, got struck. Same thing, except it broke the antenna off at the top of the tail, and the, the wire that was attached to the, to the cockpit was slamming the side of this big drum of, of an airplane. A little funny story one of the passengers we had, Carter was catching a ride, we were going to Tripoli to Wheelis Air Base we had there in Tripoli for gunnery training and he was a fighter pilot and he had his parachute with him. He's the only guy in the airplane that had a parachute and he came running up to the cockpit hearing all that slamming and he said, do we have to bail out? Do we have to bail out? And I said, well, <laughs> you're going to be the only person with a parachute. There'll be 10 of us hanging onto your legs. <laughs> so uh, then another time over the Mediterranean, uh, both myself and the co-pilot were sitting in the cockpit trying to avoid thunderstorms and uh, you could see the build up, the static build up on the wings and the propellers and next thing you know we got, and that was called South St. Elmo's fire, and next thing you know a big, we had a big discharge and a big ball of lightning came down between the pilot and the co-pilot down through the flight deck and off to the, to the cabin dissipated on the tail. It, uh, it's a good thing we were strapped in and we were probably, from fright, we were probably been out of the airplane. Anyway, 
And then we were a passenger in a U.S. air flight uh, going up to Maryland, and we got struck. And uh, you know, of course, a lot of passengers got struck up by it. It does minor damage to airplanes. Uh, another story, uh, we were building our house here in, in uh, Lake Samaldora when we were, before we moved here to Lakeview Terrace. Uh, we befriended a, a, one of those employees that, that was in charge of uh, window treatments. And uh, she was working night shift and, and she uh, parked her car under one of the big lampposts there, the metal lampposts. And while she was working, they had a, a thunderstorm. She went out to her car after work at 10 o'clock and tried to start it, wouldn't start. What happened was the lightning had, apparently had struck the pole and, and traveled into the ground up to her engine and fried all her electronics for her engine. And uh, I also had a coworker when I was at Martin Marietta, uh, Lucky Martin, uh, that his wife had the same kind of story. She was parked near a pole, lightning had struck, and her electronics got fried. So it's a, it's not a very neat thing. Anyway, lightning deaths. This is data. This is from 1959 to 2007. It shows we're still or the. A capital or over 400 deaths in that period, that time you can see here, and um, in the southeast has got a lot of deaths because they get also get a lot of thunderstorms. Same thing as Texas, um, so it's uh, not something to be proud of. The Florida lightning fatalities, if you look at the distribution uh, from that data, uh, they tend to be like central Florida down to uh, southern Florida where most of the fatalities occur. And, and you can see on this chart, most of the fatalities are, are age uh, 15 to about 40 uh, years old. And, uh, here's a little later data from 2007 to 2017. Uh, it shows the, the uh, lightning fatalities, fatalities in the US and we have uh, total of about 252 males and 66 females. And uh, there's a reason for that. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll see that in the next slide or two. Lightning types, there are all different types. Uh, there's intercloud, from cloud to cloud, we call it. Um, there's some lightning that comes way outside, 10, maybe 10, 10 miles outside the cloud. It's called a bolt from the blue. Uh, some people call it heat lightning, but it's just uh, lightning that occurred in a, in a cloud that, that uh, came up 10 miles away. Uh, then you get lightning that's the ground, and uh, it's due to the updrafts and uh, the, the uh, downdrafts and, and, the, and the reason for that. What causes it, in this slide, uh, rising air in the thunderstorm cloud get various types of frozen precipitation. If you look at the charts, the typical charts I show, the freezing level is about 15,000 feet, 10 to 15,000 feet. So these storms will get up to over 40,000 feet. So if you've got a lot of area of below freezing, uh, very small ice crystals and larger snow and ice pellets. The smaller ice crystals, uh, carry it upward to the top of the clouds. The heavier, denser, denser pellets are suspended by the rising air and start falling toward the ground. And the collisions between them, between the ice crystals and these pellets, are thunderstorm charging mechanisms. They, they're kind of a, a friction thing. How far away is the lightning? Well, Count the number of seconds between the flash that, that you've seen and of lightning and the sound of the resulting thunder. Divide that number by five to get an estimate of the distance in miles to the lightning strike. If you're, if you're outdoors uh, and hear thunder, you're in danger of being struck by lightning. Um, by the way, this, this example of this uh, distance, if you heard uh, uh, 10 seconds between the, the thunder, between the flash of lightning and the thunder, 
you divide it by five, that's two. It'll be two miles away is where that lightning is. So you get an idea of how far away the stuff is, and it's not, not very good for you. There is no safe place outdoors when a thunderstorm is nearby. The vast majority of uh, lightning victims waited too long before seeking shelter. More than 80% of lightning fatality victims are male, typically between the ages of 15 and 40. And the lightning fatalities are most common in the summer afternoons and evenings. And I'll show you another chart in a few minutes about that. And just to think of the power of, the, of, of one lightning flash could light a 100 watt light bulb for more than three months. Many wildfires, as we said earlier in the United States, especially the western United States and Alaska are ignited by lightning. And a few of them are caused by people throwing cigarettes out and that sort of thing and intentionally setting it. The channel of air through which lightning passes can be heated to 50,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than the surface of the sun, which causes the, the rapid heating and cooling of the air near the lightning channel causes a shock wave that results in thunder. So really, as I said earlier, thunderstorms are really lightning storms. The thunder is caused by the lightning. I'm going to cover a few facts and fictions in this chart on lightning. First of all, if it's not, the fiction is, if it's not raining, no lightning danger. Now, the fact is that lightning strikes outside of heavy rain about 10, it can even be 10 miles from rain. The western U.S. thunderstorms sometimes produce very little rain. So that, uh, the other fiction is rubber soles or rubber tires protect you. They really don't protect any, keep you any protection. The protection you get from being in a car with a metal body is a thing called a Faraday cage. You're in this thing where it says that when you strike it with lightning, all the charge remains in the outside and none of it gets in the interior. So a uh, steel frame of a hard top vehicle provides protection if you're not touching the metal. And you may be injured if lightning strikes a car outside. You're, you're safer inside the car, as I said. I had a demonstration in one of my early phys physics classes. The professor in his lecture was uh, demonstrating the Faraday cage, and he had a big screen enclosure, and he had a, a couple of lightning-type machines, the Van de Graaff generators that sent a charge. And he got inside this cage, and then they turned on the charged and struck the cage and they walked out unscathed. The other fiction, fiction is don't don't touch the lightning victim. They can, can carry a charge. That's fiction. The lightning victims carry no electrical charge. They need help immediately. And, right, it might be professional care, call 911, begin CPR immediately if the person's not breathing or use an automatic external defibrillator if it's available. So, uh, the next, the final uh, fiction is heat lightning is no threat. Heat lightning is a term used to describe lightning from a, from a thunderstorm too far away to hear the thunder. So that, uh, that, that covers some of the typical myths and uh, the facts. Now this, this is why we're, why so many of the men are, are killed, because most of the fatal activities include boating, riding horses, golfing, uh, riding a lawnmower, any of those activities where you are the tallest point in the area, uh, walking, mountain climbing, camping, motorcycling, standing under a tree, swimming, playing sports, all the, the lightning uh, strikes on people in Florida are on golf courses and at the beach where you both of the places you're the tallest thing in the in the area and lightning will go to the tallest thing that takes its path of uh, the least resistance. Uh, playing sports, 
watching the storm, loading a truck, fishing, running to shelter. A lot of those things are, are male activities and that's why the 80% of the deaths are, are male versus females. Okay, this slide I'm gonna start talking about hail. Uh, there's some pictures of hailstones and some of the big uh, snowball size, uh, softball size hail. Hail trivia, we'll cover in this one. Strong updrafts, water droplets to freezing height, and then they come down as ice particles. They grow in size, they're too heavy to so they fall. They're too heavy to be constantly lifted. Uh, hail is larger, larger than sleet. It forms only in thunderstorms. And large hailstones can achieve speeds greater than 100 miles an hour during their fall. And in 1970, Coffeyville, Kansas, a hailstorm weighed 1.7 pounds uh, and almost six inches in diameter. Heaviest hailstorm wave are verified in the U.S. I think the one in Texas was a couple of weeks ago was pretty close to that. Another Angelo story on this chart. A hail story, 1992. I was driving home from Winter Park, downtown Winter Park, uh, up Temple Trail, and I got hit by hailstorm, a vicious hailstorm. I couldn't even hear the radio, it was so loud, and the street was covered with hail, made driving very slippery. Um, time I got home, I had all the, ho all the horizontal surfaces of my car were damaged, all kinds of dents, and my house roof had to be replaced, uh, made driving slippery, and many cars were damaged. There were a lot of cars over University of Central Florida were damaged, parked there, student cars. Uh, this is a picture of the UCF uh, uh, hothouse in 1992. You, you can see all that's left is the, is the frame. The next slide is what happens when you, you, come, you fly too near a, a thunderstorm. Uh, you, you catch the hail that gets thrown out and you can see the leading edge of the wing of this airplane. Fortunately, he was able to make a landing, but it wasn't going to be flying very well. We'll talk about... Okay, uh, the tornado damage scale that, ex that exists that uh, your weathermen that you watch on TV will, will talk about, and that's a scale that's devised by Theodore Fujira, from the University of Chicago. And it's a scale that's called the EF0 terminology all the way up to EF5. And uh, the increasing numbers go with increasing damage uh, from gale tornadoes to uh, all the way to incredible tornadoes uh, where strong houses are lifted off foundations and disintegrated automobile sized projectiles fly more than 100 miles an hour. Trees are debarked. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the, the uh, strength of the tornadoes. Uh, frequency, this chart shows the frequency of tornadoes of, in Florida, 1973 to 2003, uh, of F2 and greater, these are more powerful tornadoes. And it shows it peaking in the, in the middle of the, uh, the spring, dropping down in the summertime and peaking up again in the fall with massive changes of weather, with cold fronts and that sort of thing occurring. Tornado classifications, the weak tornadoes, consist of about 88% of all tornadoes. They're less than 5% of the deaths. And uh, that would be the EF0 to EF1 damages. And strong tornadoes uh, are the EF2 to EF3 level they consist of 11% of all tornadoes. Uh, nearly 30% of the tornado deaths come from this classification. And then the violent tornadoes, are less than 1% of all tornadoes, 
but they account for 70% of all tornado deaths. And uh, they can last as long as an hour with winds over 160 miles an hour and the EF40, EF5 damage levels. To give you an idea what, what, what they're talking about when they call it tornadoes. And this chart, next chart here, we have a uh, so we're talking about cumulonimbus mammatus clouds. Uh, we talked about cumulus clouds being stacked up, piled up clouds from Latin. The nimbus also from Latin means rain bearing. And the mammatus or the mamma clouds were developed by uh, some sexist weatherman. They resemble the shape of uh, female breasts. And they are associated with the violent thunderstorms or tornadoes. Uh, they're rounded, irregular pockets. I have a picture of it shown here. Um, and the signposts of violent turbulence. If you see this, run and take shelter in a safe place because you're going to be encountering quite a tornado. And finally, we talk about hurricanes. The picture here of Hurricane Irma a couple of years ago in Umatilla, and our friend uh, the Umatilla Inn is, shows its destruction, which as you, you probably know by now hasn't been open, uh, so it's, it's a mess. Uh, another picture of Hurricane, Hurricane Michael up in the Panhandle uh, 22 years ago uh, shows the destruction, and the interesting thing is there's a boat in the middle of this picture, uh, well inland. So that uh, hurricane was pretty powerful and destroyed a lot of things. And categories of hurricanes, we'll talk about that. Uh, tropical storm level is, is winds from 39 to 73 miles an hour. And the flooding is really the biggest danger with that. And they go category one, two, three, up to, all the way up to category five, uh, with the various levels of damage. Uh, the, the, so when you hear a weatherman talking about various categories, they're they're anticipating. That's what he's talking about. Hurricanes most feared weather in the state of Florida. I'm going to throw in here the one, one thing about hurricanes is you have plenty of time to prepare, days to prepare or evacuate to get out of the hurricane's path. Uh, unlike the other weather phenomena we've been talking about. Uh, it's a tropical cyclone, and I use the term cyclone. The term cyclone actually says, refers to counterclockwise rotation of the winds around the low pressure center. In this case, it would be the eye of the, the hurricane. So it, uh, any, any tropical, any cyclone. Uh, in the Far East and the Pacific, they call them cyclones. They're the same thing as hurricanes. A hurricane is a cyclone. Uh, in a typical year, you get, you get at, least one, at least one plus tropical storms or hurricanes that, that threaten Florida. They're talking about a fairly active hurricane season here, which, which uh, started the 1st of July and goes through the 31st, 30th of November. However, the hurricanes don't really have a calendar, so sometimes they'll, they'll occur before the 1st of June, rather not the 1st of July, the 1st of June, and they'll might happen after the 30th of November. So a small percentage of them become more organized. Uh, the cyclonic uh, rotation, circulation, counterclockwise, I said, uh, with a thunderstorm activity, uh, it's called a tro sometimes called a tropical depression. The sustained winds are about 30 miles, 39 miles an hour. It's a tropical storm greater than 74 miles an hour is a hurricane. And Winds over 111 miles an hour, a major hurricane. The has associated with, with uh, hurricanes and tropical storms are tornadoes, storm surge, winds, coastal flooding, flooding from heavy rain. All of those can be part of the hurricane hazard. 
uh, away from the coastline. You're going to face the, the uh, inland flooding uh, and, the, and the tornadoes that can happen. It's often overlooked, to, but these hurricanes can spawn tornadoes. And so storm surge is a wall of water from the ocean. Uh, that's, uh, for the coastal areas, that's a significant uh, danger. Winds, of course, we know that about the winds, the uh, tropical storms and hurricanes. Uh, the biggest problem with a lot of the winds, not only the wind itself, but the wind has a lot of debris and can uh, throw projectiles at your windows and that sort of thing. Uh, and flooding is the most correlated with system intensity, not correlated with system intensity. You can get flooding with any level of hurricane. It's related to the speed. If the hurricane stays in one place for a long time, you're probably going to get a lot of flooding. Source of weather data I put up here, uh, www.weather.gov. There's all the information you could want. It links to nearly everywhere weather-wise. Another source I use a lot is aviationweather.gov. That gives you radar. Uh, and satellite observations, and uh, you can you can put the uh, observations into the motion to get an idea where they where the systems are moving and how they're moving. And then there's another one called FloridaDisaster.org, covers a lot of the Florida hazardous weather. So those are interesting things for you, for you to play with if you get a computer. And finally, we'll talk about heat. Uh, practicing heat safety where, wherever you are. Heat is something we don't usually consider, but heat-related deaths are preventative, preventable. Protect yourself and, and, and others from the, from the impacts of heat waves. You can, in job sites, you want to have, uh, stay hydrated, take breaks often in the shade, as often as possible indoors. Check up on the elderly, sick, and those without air conditioning. And vehicles never leave kids or pets unattended. Look before you lock. And outdoors, limit your strenuous activity. Have a lot of uh, a lot of water. Stay hydrated and find shade, and minimize the strenuous activities. And to, Talking about this chart on heat exhaustion versus heat stroke, uh, both of them are dangerous, and there's various things you can do. Uh, if you have heat stroke, someone has heat, heat stroke, call 911, because you're going to have to have professional help. Try to keep the person cool uh, while you're waiting for help. And this slide I'm showing a chart of the uh, heat index. And along the top you'll find the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and the relative humidity. In Central Florida typically in the summer you can get up to 90, 95, 95 degrees temperature and you usually get a hit humidity it's going to be 75 or higher percent. Let's say 95 degrees, 75 this, this Orange colored band in the middle is is uh, danger. If you get into the red, if you get a day where it's maybe 96 and and 90% uh, humidity, you're in the danger zone. So it's a real problem here in Central Florida for heat. For pay more attention to it. Now, with this chart, along this chart, this shows the. U.S. child vehicular heat stroke deaths. This is a chart that shouldn't even be there. It, 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 it's, it's just a, a incredible the you know, number of kids that are left in cars. And you can see uh, the last full year was 19, uh, 2018. We had 52 deaths in the U.S. of children. And uh, it's an incomplete year, the last one, but we already had nine deaths, and we hadn't even we got started in 2019. That's something to keep it, keep in mind. Do not 
want kids and pets in, in a car in the, in the summer, in the heat. It doesn't make any sense. And finally, I'm going to show you a couple of charts that I picked out earlier from uh, what you get off your those weather sites, that uh, hurricane site you can get uh, is showing a, a, a tropical storm down the south of Louisiana, and uh, there's a poss possibility of something occurring out here where the X is uh, over the next uh, two days. And what you'll find, if you go into it a little further, play around with the website, you can find that they'll give you a forecast of where the center of this this thing will go, and whether it's still a storm or it degenerates to just a depression. And, and you can track and see where where it's going to go. And if it's a hurricane, you can try to figure out what the best way to go to get get away from it the fastest if you're going to evacuate. And that's the, the summary of our, our talk on uh, Florida winter weather, uh, summer weather. Have a good day.